please help me welcome to the stage, Corrine Zalot. On September 4, 1984, at age 14, I was abducted, beaten, and raped by a convicted killer. I barely managed to escape with my life. We have a hard time facing into pain. What it calls for is a true act of courage to be able to say, I am going to face into this pain and then choosing to surround myself with healthy people who can walk me through that pain. It's about taking a person out of that realm of being a victim because even though we cannot start our journey and write how we want it to start we can always write how we want it to end. Nothing is fixed that even though we've gone through something or experienced something we can rewire and, and relearn and create new pathways. I was consumed with shame, resignation, and rage, and I felt powerless. I was going to die a statistic if I didn't change the trajectory of my life. This is it. Like, this is where I'm drawing the line, and this is the way I'm going to live my life. Like, what happened then is no longer going to control me. Life supports you in your realization, in your breakthrough, in your new stand for your life. Almost 30 years later, I knocked on Bill's door and forgave him. When you forgive somebody for something that they've done to you that was so wrong, you're not condoning what they did, but what you're doing instead is you're setting yourself free. It's not going to be a monumental event that changes trauma for you. It's going to be ordinary acts of courage in different moments where there's none of that past in the way and you're able to then create a possibility. Consider this. The absence of forgiveness is really the absence of completely processing the experience of what hurt us. We are then holding our own self hostage to the past. Lucky your phone still works or she would be dead. I think you need to be shown how serious we are, Ren. Re-elect Senator Gibson. I'm Senator Gibson and I approve this message because I am down to continue to clean up our town. You have four hours to make a package exchange for me. Your daughter's life will depend on it. Daddy, 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 daddy! The time starts now. <laughs> Well, that was fun. Who are you? He'll do what needs done. What the hell happened to you? Kill him! They have my daughter. You're breaking my heart. Oh, wait, 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 wait. 
especially you, Tugbo. Were you a bad guy, Daddy? A crowbar? Really? It's quieter. He doesn't run out of ammo. I wouldn't underestimate a father because she was breaking point. Okay. I just need it. I'm a businessman. Nighty night. Senator Gibson has been corrupting the city. How do you think he's been in office for so long? Two choices. You can either go along with this little plan and trust that he's gonna give you your daughter back. Or you can tell him you know the truth and grab him by the There's either a deadbeat dad or or his fear he's gonna feel his response. Man, I hate politicians. I've told people I am crazy, and I guess some people will think I am, but to me, it's being helpful. It's not that I'm crazy. <laughs> I hope that the people that watch this documentary know that all I am doing is caring for something that nobody cares for. I don't know what's real anymore. People with eyesight just don't think that blind people can do as much as they do. So I'm kind of just used as a way to show them that I can. In life, not only in just in football, where you're going to be underdogs. In life, you're going to find times where you think that you're outmatched. And you only are if you allow yourself to be that way. You're only outmatched if you give in to that. I don't think anybody could stop me. For, from playing football. As long as I'm good, they should be good. He's a freshman. 
high school kid who who's just like his teammates. He just, you know, he just has an, he has an extra challenge uh, to him, but he, he wants the same things as we do. They're gonna hit you on your blind side. He's like, Mom, all my sides are blind. So what? Broncos on three. One, two, three, Broncos! This is a, a secret map. Someone drew me in London directions to William Blake's grave. <laughs> class culture of, of Detroit has disappeared a lot in the last 25 years. Jack of diamonds made me cry, stick to gamble till I die. Jack of diamonds is a hard call to play. Play the, play the song. I just did. All the way through and sing it. It doesn't work that way. When it blocks, it blocks. And I ain't gonna tell you one damn time no more. If they are, if they are uh, willing to listen, I might be willing to tell. And I tried, tried so hard. I tried to unlocksicate. Well, I'm free, free, and deny you. Always behind the waterways. <laughs> Maybe cowboys <laughs> or something. Yeah. Thoughts have torn you. Dreams die on your soil and seek down rest. You have to work every day to try to change this structure of uh, hate. Because when you don't allow someone the same opportunity, it's hateful. Well, Mr. Moon Shadow, well, Mr. Moon Shadow, my old friend, well, I lost my body. Well, won't you take my, well, won't you take my breath, won't you take my breath as we go on the ring. You want me to listen to something? Better be good. Where do you come up with something like that if you're going to Philip Sandover in 1966-67? Six prep school kids that just ate, slept, breathed music for four years. Literally millions of kids who were saying to each other, let's start a band. Whether it was good or bad at the time, it was still so much fun, it didn't matter. We came back to our senior years at Andover knowing we were going to do an album. We wanted songs that when people heard them, they'd say, oh yeah, that's the rising storm. When we finished the album, I don't think any of us thought that it was all that terrific. They couldn't even sell to their own damn classmates on their way out the door for three measly bucks. After Andover, we all sort of went our ways. And, and you know, and then in, in, I think it was 81 is when, when this whole thing started. The big American collectors wanted to have the rising storm, the big European collectors wanted to have the rising storm. Would I rather hang out with the Rolling Stones? No. Really? Would I rather hang out with the Beatles? Probably not. Schmuck. The Asian collectors want to have the rising storm. Everybody wants to have the rising storm. You guys are famous. The album is a collector's item. All these high-end collectors hear about it. They all want a copy. 
Aha! Like, they were walking guitar gods or, or something. It, it really was kind of magical. But, but yet, again, don't quit your day job. Every time I pass a record store, and I'm probably never gonna hit the jackpot on this, but I have to go into the record store and see if I can find the Rising Storm record. It's not just one of the many diamond necklaces that the Queen has. It is the crown jewel of 60s garage rock. sound is pure vibration. When a vibration is played with intention, it carries meaning. By playing music with somebody from another culture, we can communicate. Using this instrument to bypass the mind and the ego and really speak from the body and from the soul, and I could almost feel a certain part of my mind opening up. I think if the entire world could communicate through music, it would be a very colorful place to exist. the opportunity to travel the world with a self-made instrument strapped to my back. Every single experience that I've had on this trip, I've learned something about myself. Didgeridoo is one of the most honest ways to express myself and anything that's inside that wants to get out. Big present for me, God give me, Didgeridoo. I love so much, so much love. Showing kids how to do this for their first didgeridoo experience and every teacher's dream, which is to be met with just pure inspiration. I experienced bewilderment and wonder and excitement and curiosity in communication with people who don't speak my language when we're speaking through vibrations of music. Music is a universal language. I miss playing music with you. Oh, have you thought any more about New York? I don't know. Why, does this got something to do with Logan? Well, you, you're gonna marry this guy or something? Dakota, we need to stop having sex. Your mom says you're working at a bar? Stop! What the hell? What's the matter with you? Oh, strangers don't see you the way that I do, I do. All I hear is music in your name. It's, uh... It's been hell of a week, I tell ya. <laughs> Thank you.
incognito witch. the NBA. Yes! And then there's this guy. It looks like it's his knee. Oh, this hurts just to look at. This year. Oh my god. You're that basketball guy. And you work here now? <laughs> we need therapy. Bro, you wear a speedo. One movie will make all others look small. Did you guys hear the good news? We're gonna be on TV. Action! 24-7's for pussies. Wear dumbbells. 25 8 bitch. Did you put a towel on? You're not a locker room guy, huh? More like not a cock in my face guy. It's got buff dudes. Seen the numbers on my YouTube video? That dramatic chipmunk better watch out. Or I'm gonna give it my nuts. Uh -huh. Hot chicks. Oh. Voila. Oh, wait. That's Fabio? It's Fabio. Fabio. Fabio, you idiot. Fabio's kind of a dick, huh? Fuck you, Seacrest. It's Fabio's time. Oh. I bet even his dick is a six-pack. You like chicks, right? I Evil cults. Get it! No, not there! <laughs> Holy cow, what happened? It was them! Supercuts? Bankers. Does that mean I get the loan? What? No, you have no assets besides the size of your balls for even asking for that amount of money. Relationships. Newsflash, I make minimum wage, which makes me about as attractive to women as a yeast infection. Sorry, my bad. My bad, who are you, Snoop Dogg now? Feels so good to work out high. Pep talks. Let's have some fun. But most importantly, don't fuck up my shit. <laughs> He's not a dimwit. You have to have wit to be dim. And Tom Cruise. Oh, no, that is not Tom Cruise. That is Tom Cruise. You can clean. And not Tom Cruise. Oh. This is only the beginning of the Dumbbells experience. Yes! Yeah! Oh, oh, there's my big boy. Oh, there he Whoa. is. I swear to God, 50% of those chicks can fit their full fist in their mouth. Sucks that one couldn't get it back out. Dumbbells. Are you drinking soda? Are you out of your mind? I'm down in some cock. Cellular oxygen creatine. It tastes like cherries. I first met Tom when he was an athlete here. In 1988, he was part of the national championship NCAA wrestling team. You're out there by yourself. It's a one-on-one -on -one combative situation. That's very strong in his makeup. He looks to prove something not only to himself, but to other people. Tom Ortiz, who is stepping into the cage at 50 years old. You gotta commend a guy for that. I know I would. I've always wanted to fight my pro debut, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And people are saying, he did this at 50? Who says you can? It's about patience and enjoying the journey. You think you're the guy that you were in college, and anybody can get hit. How will your age play into that? I have a goal, fight, I have a vision, and I have a plan to win the fight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a unique moment in MMA history. Please welcome to the cage, making his professional MMA debut, Tom Never let anyone tell you that you can't do it. The rains came and they kept coming, they kept coming and... A four or five foot wall of water came down 
carrying rocks and stones and logs. We spent five to six days on the Pecos. Two of those days we were holed up in caves waiting for a flash flood to recede enough to where we could continue the odyssey. What he tells is that he knew from right then that it was going to change his life. Charlie Sorlin served 50 years for murder. What would you do if we were to grant you a conditional parole today? Probably think you'd be an asset out there by putting your abilities to wider use. It has become a very powerful tool with law officers. He said the guy was stupid. I mean, that's why he got caught. I could do it even better. But his redemption comes with unwanted admiration. What? You know her? A copycat praise. He admires me for all the wrong things I've done, but detests me for all the right I've done since. As detectives hire Charlie to catch his own emulator. Then what exactly do you need? I need you to get into the mind of this guy. He's obviously affected by your work. The knife through the heart with minimal blood spatter? No more details outside the department. Cassidy said to be a good person to talk to. Every time I'm here, you'll be here watching some about serial killers. I heard you were into serial killers and stuff. There's another body found early this morning. We got witnesses who saw you there. Yeah, you don't have any witnesses saying this song would kill anyone though, do you? With friends to cover for him. Would you sit in on the interview? All right, I'll do it. He eludes. Charming Charlie, the man himself. So he did the profile, huh? On me. How sure are you that he's the one? About 80. I'm coming for you myself without a badge. <laughs> Emulator. Winter's coming, we need to stock up, otherwise we're dead meat. We don't got nothing to worry about. We are gonna have the fattest, the juiciest, the nicest Thanksgiving ham <laughs> that you <laughs> ever saw! Wait, are you saying that? Oh, uh, ma'am, if there's uh, any help you need around the farm, all you'd have to do is ask. Okay, listen up, everybody. I'm going out to find Dad, and Elvis is coming with me! What? Catch up, slow pop! I definitely hope so. I don't know how I feel about this. Elvis, you've got to be kidding me. What? Bye, Bobby. Bye, thanks again. There's no poop this way, so let's go that way. Easy enough. Kevin, you said you were going to make an effort to meet some new friends. So how's that going? <laughs> Kevin, I think interacting with new people hey, would guys. do you good out here. I don't think I'm ready yet. 
I have an idea. I know you don't like pills. Doc. This is gonna make you feel a lot better. Just try it. You can always stop. Nós somos os Beatles, vocês podem achar a gente no Spotify. A gente vai cantar agora uma nossa das antigas. Já viu pra ele tipoca em oito. A gente tá em 5 do frio. O Pedrão hoje ficou hospitalizado. Eu tô um pouco órfão de Pedro mesmo. A única coisa que vai sair daqui da sua casa vai ser o seu baixo. Gostaria de apresentar a nossa mais nova aquisição, que é esse baixista que a gente conheceu ontem à noite. Quando eu vejo aqui, sete e meia da manhã, cara, aí eu encontro esse cara aqui, cara. Vocês são demais, cara. Se alguém aí tocar sanfona, a gente também tá louco pra demitir o João pra sanfoneiro. É uma banda, mas a gente tenta manter essa bagunça. Nossa, isso vai desandar a maionese aqui. Vai tocar dentro do seu carro? Ele mandando aquele violão dele bem alto, tá esse maluco aqui berrando. A Santadinha são oito caras juntos, né? Sério, Sam? Foi uma hora e vinte de, de passagem de som e a gente ainda não conseguiu, olha que legal. Puta que pariu, eu vou mandar tomar no cu. Na verdade, eu não me considero muito bem um músico. Um troço que eu nunca imaginei na minha vida foi ganhar dinheiro com música. Tá uma briga ali de pior música. Esse negócio de, ah, não sou músico, todo mundo é aqui, cara, sacou? É só questão de sentar a porra da bunda na cadeira e estudar, velho, porque música é compromisso pra caralho, entendeu? Até mais real, Minas Gerais. Ô, para dele! Ô, para dele! Ô, para dele! Today we're going to discuss drugs, and if you abuse them enough, they can kill you. I know because they almost killed me. Because I was jumping all the time, they called me Jumping Johnny Klein. Johnny Klein was a powerhouse for the home world drugs. I used to love to rebound. He could out-rebound all these tall people. But couldn't nobody hang his ass, he could. Michael Jordan ain't doing nothing Klein couldn't do. Johnny Klein is really a superstar. It's a very similar story to what Jackie Robinson endured. To have overcome the things that he's uh, overcome, he's uh, a symbol to uh, many people. Alcohol, nicotine, marijuana, crack, cocaine, heroin. And one thing led to another. They were the first thing across my mind. You're gonna have to kill that man. At Wayne State, he was an All-American. The kids say now he had mad hops. I've never really seen anything like him. His life shows you all of what, what sports can be, you know. He saw society, he saw a need, and he committed himself to addressing that need. John, how would you like to be remembered? <laughs> remembered? Who's gonna remember me? <laughs>
why did I become a photographer? Uh, to avoid having a proper job, I think. Melody Maker was quite unique, really, because it was the world's first weekly music publication. We went out to clubs and, uh, you know, people would come up and say, hey, you've got to come and see this band, they're really good. We go down, do a quick interview, do a snap, and they'd be on the front page. It's been the backbone of the British music industry forever. You didn't turn up to go on stage. We could make or break hit records by promoting them, putting them on the front cover. You saw yourself on the front page of Melody Maker, and that, that became you. The musicians would actually come into the office to be interviewed, which is inconceivable today. We had one famous singer who came up and was thrown out. What who was that guy? Do you remember? Bob Dylan, I think, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to be thrust into the midst of the record business like I was, it was like Aladdin's cave was suddenly opened up and all the jewels were mine to, 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 to inspect. Ten years of that was uh, a fun party, you know. We should have been there, it was great. Running wild across the great state. Music to me is something that um, is so extremely important in my life, and I've seen it be important in others' lives as well. For someone who would do a video of a senior, sen senior citizen, she has such an interesting life. My name is Carol Buell. Could you call me? Thank you. Credit cards. I have a, a nice car. My house. My, an apartment in Dubai. I, it's... What do you want? I'll give you anything. Your soul. I don't want to die now. There's been something of a paradigm shift with olive oil. I think of it as the known unknown. Everyone knows what it is. Everyone goes to the grocery store and they buy it. But you don't really know the product that's actually on your table. We will try real oil. You're like, it's too spicy. It's too strong. And they throw it away. They come back to it on their own. And you just taste it. And you can't help but like feel it in your soul. Why are we doing this? Why did you go to the great lengths to make such an incredible product or to obsessively stay on something when the general consumer has not really discovered olive oil yet? It's almost like they know it, but they haven't discovered it yet. So the answer is just passion. Like the passion is trumping every single thing. This is what you don't do. Put it in bags, close them off, not aired. That oil will not taste good.
¡Abuelo! ¡Pasa, que hace rasquilla! My name is Clark Tanakongva, as my English name is, and uh, Hopi name is Nanha. This is the place where Hopi calls his place of emergence. And once we do our time here on present day Earth, we return back here, because this is a place where the Creator allowed us to be. Yo -e -na -na We are all one, but yet it's just that our skin colors may be different, our religion and culture may be different, but yet we all pray to the same man. How we practice it is this is what we're providing as far as the flutes, the songs, and this is actually Hopi. Maybe you're more comfortable going to a house of worship, but this is our house of worship where you'll get the same kind of blessings if you respect it and do your prayers. But that's what I would like to say to the people out here is that come here and respect it in that kind of way. And I think you will walk away from here with a whole new renewal of life. That's something that's going to carry you wherever you're from, from Japan, Germany, Korea, other people that have been here, not just what we call Americans today. Hey, hey, did anybody find a wallet? I'll go check in the back. Is this it? Everything go okay this week? Any episodes? No, no, pretty good week. How about your work? You missing any time from your work? No, no, work's fine. Donuts aren't real challenging. But it pays the bills. I wouldn't go that far. Get your stuff. I'm not even dressed yet. What's the hurry? I just thought we'd stop by the freight building before we hit Errol's. Wait, is there mischief afoot? Do you guys want to see a dead president? Behold, James Buchanan. He was the guy right before Lincoln. Supposed to be the worst president ever. He looks like a ghoul. Well, this ghoul happens to be the most valuable thing that's ever come through this dock. I know how we can pay off all of our bills. We're going to steal the corpse of President James Buchanan. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Isn't it? This could be our greatest adventure yet. Corpses, history, spy shit. This thing's got it all. Cha 
talking about kidnapping. It's grave robbing at best. You know you cannot possibly get away with this. I figured out an awesome plan. The drop will be at Washington and Fort. They were to put $150,000 in the where our carefree future awaits. It's like criminal beautiful minds. It's brilliant. You're like an evil genius. Is this a joke? You stole a human being. A dead one. The rules are wildly different. I never saw you making more than minimum wage. Don't force me to set fire to a president. Don't get snappy. I'm just trying to wrap my head around why the voters elected a boob for president. A boob? Look, for $40,000, you can get him back. He's one of the state's biggest embarrassments. And we had Three Mile Island and Game 6 of the 93 World Series. Good luck selling your corpse, ma'am. Nobody cares about James Buchanan, right? You knew it was a risky path. Why do you persist? I'm persistent. I still can't believe how light his body was. Well, you take the moisture out of a guy and he's just a pile of sticks. see the need to tell this story and then you go do it because if you don't go do it you have to answer to yourself you know you figure out ways to do your job so um, thinking back now yeah it was crazy but at the time it was either you figure out how to tell the story or you go home and I wanted to be part of that story, to witness the story so and document it, so I went into Iraq. Um, thing else is just a noise. It's, it's, you know, it's news. You can't anticipate it. But am I going to let it fear me from doing it? No. I'm going to go do it. Courage. It's been a long road of really hard work, and um, and I'm proud of our profession. It becomes frustrating as a photojournalist or as a journalist to keep telling the same stories over and over again. And history keep repeating itself. Watching all these refugees, you know, come over the border crying and, you know, from this ethnic cleansing. And I'm like, never again, never means never again with our species. I think there's great power in, in photographs, especially the still image. For some reason, a still image just becomes ingrained in your, in your mind. If I feel something really strongly, I, it's almost like I have to do it. I have to tell that story because it needs to be told, and and I believe that what we leave behind is is a really important document of our time, and our, it's our legacy. I was just taken by the conflict. I was a hard news photographer, and I would just get on a plane because I couldn't forgive myself for not getting on a plane. I knew I was doing something important. It was just this deep 
deep need to see what people were doing to, to gain freedom. And especially when there was one side with weapons and the other not, it was a, a special thing for me to be there because to, as a witness. I was interested in making order out of chaos as well so that it would touch people and reach people. Touching people was really important. The audience knowing what was going on. Even when he was dying and he was in Beverly Hills, he kept saying, when are we going home? When are we going home? He loved it here. He was a desert rat. And Palm Springs was his home. This was such an enclave for celebrities. The perfect retreat. All of the actors and writers and producers. I mean, there was no media spotlight. The cops were very friendly. Everything that someone who's going to call himself a swinger could possibly want in Palm Springs. Mr. Sinatra was Mr. Palm Springs. He made this town. It was like magic. He liked Palm Springs better than any place. He built New York, New York for JFK. JFK decided not to stay there, and that upset him a lot. His pianist, his personal pianist, Frankie Randall, he had to live close enough to Sinatra so that whenever Frank called and said, hey, I feel like singing, get over here. When the sun went down, that's when he became alive. Uh, <laughs> you know who else? Elvis. He was nocturnal. Never got it. was a big love of his life. On this house, in Rancho Mirage. On the step, he always lighted a candle for her. Everybody in Palm Springs has stories about Sinatra. He was the greatest and he could be the toughest. It was a party up here all the time. He built it to entertain his friends. He used to bring all the girls in from Las Vegas by helicopter. He'd fly them in his Learjet to Palm Springs Airport. And he traveled with a regular entourage. And the old guys, they would just sit around, they'd throw ice cubes at each other, like a bunch of young kids. Very, very childish. He would have the waiters line up, and just hundred dollar bills, just like that. And he was very finicky about his food. The greenie was thrown against the wall. That's nothing for Frank. He was Frank. We've waited on four different presidents. Nobody asks about Bush anymore. They don't ask about Ford anymore. He would read the newspaper every day to see if anybody needed any help. Three, three thirty in the morning. Say, time to just take a ride. I'd get up and get in the car, and we'd ride around the desert all night long. <laughs> It'd be a story about maybe a woman whose mobile home burnt down. He'd be on the phone within a half hour and they'd be writing a check and it would be anonymous. Almost every week somebody said he was a close personal friend of Frank's. For 36 years, he never once said, Trini, call me Frank. Never. What did you call him? Frank. If you'd come back to me. He looked at me, I looked at him and I went, strangers in the night? As soon as I get here, I just start with reviewing my day. And so I'll go through my lesson plans and I'll double check to see do I have all of the copies that I need done? Do I have all of the materials that need to be set up ahead of time? And once class is going, it's just kind of just this constant like move, move, move. Good morning, Kate. How are you? Good. Hey, boys and girls, you're already too noisy and we've talked about the chairs. Hey, Hi. You can't take a bunch of nomadic natives who were incredibly successful, rich in culture and past, and completely changed their existence, give them a plot of land they're not used to being on. By the way, this land is in Washington. Different climate, don't you think? No, you are doing great. This is not a reason to give up right now. Oh, wait. This, wait. So what is this passage going to be about? Here's 
There's not a time where you ask me and I'm just sitting there and you're asking me, what are you thinking about? It's always about what is what is the problem in my classroom? What's the problem with these lessons? And so that is 24-7. I'm just a teacher all the time. There are times that I just have nothing left in me. I just kind of just, pff, I can't I can't give anymore. There's no more I can give. I have a second job. I teach during the day and then uh, this Saturday I'll work um, to 9, 10 o'clock in an ice cream shop, and next Friday I'll work to 11.30, probably 12, and close the ice cream shop down. Every year, my wife and I talk about, are we gonna apply somewhere else? Part of that's pay, right? A part of that is, is can you get up every morning and show up and, and challenge students and have them challenge you? It's really tiring and taxing. It's hard to be the best teacher that I can be. The job of a teacher is not sustainable. Good night. And we're leaning towards applying to Olympia Washington School District. This is part of the story of teaching what is going to come next. Across these mountains lies Tibet. On this side of the Himalayas live thousands of Tibetans, waiting, hoping, praying for the day when Tibet will be free. Let the world know that suppression cannot suppress the spirit of freedom. How may I help you? By the way, we haven't got a chance to talk yet. Uh, Theodore Davis? Cayenne. What happened at work today? Someone is stealing bodies. This is Jack.
job too much for you. All I do is release the bodies. Yeah, we'll see about that. Come on, Kai, you're a smart girl. You know something is going on. No, I don't. Some cases touch us more than others. Even though we try not to bring them home with us, sometimes we do. Hope doesn't exist for our office. When our office is called, all hope is lost. Ma'am, I'm going to need you to provide me with some information. Who sent you? I want to mark the boundaries of this place and then be on my way. Now please, let's continue. First, you must tell me what you saw as you made your way to my house. Yeah. It's quite strange. <laughs> Could you keep a shit together? Form A, question one. How long have you resided in this section? You worried about me? We're worried about you. Question two. How many animals are kept on the property? You think I'm a danger? We think that you are a danger to yourself. What are you hassling an old lady for? Please tell me about that, please. Take off your shirt. Question three. How many sexual relations have you had in the past? Don't you see? No one needs me. You're lying through your teeth and I don't know why. On your way here this morning, on my way here this morning. I feel sick. What business do you have with me, young man? Why are you here? I want to mark the boundaries of this place and then be on my way. Hey, beautiful. What's up? This is Glenn. Were you able to leave work early? I told my mom we'd try to be there around four. And this is Lucy, his wife. They had no idea that this would be a very important day in their marriage. I'm sorry, I'm not perfect. With many twists and turns that will leave Glenn speechless. Ah. You drive me crazy. Ah. A comedy with consequences.